Another morning. I wake up at around 1 or 2 p.m. I'm jobless at the moment, so it doesn't matter when I get up. I brush my teeth, check if there are any unwashed dishes, and then I go to my room. I sit in front of my laptop. I watch YouTube. I read manga. I scroll through my phone. Any distraction that I can find to indulge in. I must not be alone with my thoughts. What am I doing wasting another day? No, it's okay. Tomorrow, for sure, I'll change something. No, who am I lying to? I know myself. Every day is the same. I am stuck in a repeated cycle of self-loathing and a life that has no purpose. Oh, I forgot to eat. It's okay, I'll eat later. Oh, it's already 6 p.m. I don't feel like cooking. I'll go and order food, I guess. Oh, what a bliss. Everything is gonna be okay, right? No, you fool, of course not. I'll go and sit at the balcony for a while. Maybe that will help my mind to calm down. What a nice atmosphere. I'll read manga. It's 8 p.m. now. I just ended up spending another hour in a fictional world. Oh well. This is fun. What the hell are you doing? I'll put on a stream for now. I guess it's time to go to sleep. This ceiling. How many nights have I spent here drowning? Another day coming to an end. A day void of any significant events. How long am I going to repeat days like this? Welcome to the NHK is a show about a 22-year-old shut-in Sato Tatsuhiro, a man who dropped out of uni, doesn't have a job, doesn't have friends, goals, anything. Due to social anxiety, he stays in his dim apartment and rots away, hoping to disappear because killing himself would be too much of a pain. Unlike most similar characters, Sato doesn't have a tragic and traumatic past. He lived a normal life and had a normal family. So what went wrong? I asked that myself too. When exactly did I let myself sink this low? I watched Welcome to the NHK over two years ago at this point, and no other show has resonated with me as well as this one did. Its dark humor feels like those jokes you make about your problems to mask the real issue, and its truly raw moments break you and punch you in the gut. But no, I'm not like Sato. I graduated from university. I have ambitions. Like... Um, I, I make videos, sometimes. Oh god, it takes so much effort to make one. Even writing this one. I have toyed with the idea of a video like this for months, but it takes so much energy. One day, a girl comes knocking on Sato's door. A savior, perhaps. No, Misaki is not really the angel coming to this poor man's help. She has her own selfish reasons as well, like most people do to fill that void in order to live. Nightly lessons to cure Sato are obviously not helpful, but they do lead to Sato into a few scenarios where he has to come out of his shell, his apartment. However, they are not enough to change Sato. A lifestyle like that is hard to break out of, so Sato jumps from one silly attempt to another in hopes of maybe, just maybe, this will be it. One such thing comes from meeting his former classmate Hitomi, a girl who believes in conspiracies in order to blame them for all her troubles and misfortunes. Sato displays his belief in conspiracies as well, although in his case, he never truly believes that they are the reason for his failures. Deep down, Sato knows that he is the only one to blame for who he became, and he's the only one who can change who he is as well. Sato hits many lows throughout the show. This isn't your average story where the protagonist has an inspiring road to success. Hitomi was a girl that Sato was a bit interested in in high school, and he regrets not pursuing a relationship with her. He thinks maybe if he had then, his life would have turned out better. But foolishly and blindly following Hitomi leads Sato to an island that he thinks is a resort, but ends up being a meetup for a few individuals wanting to end their lives. Sato realizes this too late, and when he does, he doesn't even back down. After all, what's the point? He's worthless. This might be an opportunity to finally end all his sufferings, but the group is stopped by one of the guys, and then Hitomi's boyfriend comes on a boat to save her to tell her that he loves her and needs her. On the same boat, there's Misaki and Yamazaki to stop Sato, but Misaki's words 
pierce through Sato's heart, making him want to jump even more, telling him just how worthless he is, and just how much Misaki needs him just because of that. Sato feeling more pathetic than ever, he wants to jump but is stopped by the rest of the group. A failed attempt, and Sato gets to see another day, even if he sees no hope in tomorrow. Yamazaki is another character that has a major impact on Sato's life. He's the next door neighbor and Sato's former underclassman. Yamazaki is a struggling dude in his 20s as well, but unlike Sato, he has a clear dream and a drive to actually make it happen. His dream is to become a game creator and Yamazaki does not hesitate to get to work, even dragging Sato with him. For Sato, this is an opportunity to finally do something. Now with no budget and a big team, the only game they can make is an arrow game, basically an adult anime game for those who don't know. Sato has no abilities though, no skills, what can he possibly do? Well, write the script of course. I can't write well, he says. I've never done that, he says. Not having a single bit of faith in himself. After all, he has been nothing but a disappointment. Surely he can't do it. But Yamazaki encourages him, telling him about the humble beginnings of a game creator and how they could rise to fame together, eventually being able to create their own corporation. Yeah, this might be it, Sato thinks. This might be what will save him from his Hikikomori life. Yeah, maybe this video will be it. Maybe this will lead to something. After I finish it, I will suddenly feel good again. But reality isn't like that. Why am I even working on this video? What am I trying to accomplish here, making one video every 2-3 months and they aren't even good videos, but mediocre ones? Am I trying to make this channel work or am I just making videos whenever I feel like it as a means to do something creative? Regardless of the choice, without consistency there is no improvement and without improvement the feeling of stagnation just eats you away. But for now I should just keep writing this video without any further thoughts or I will never finish it. Sato struggles, can't come up with any ideas, tries to avoid writing, but Yamazaki is there to push him and give him a little kick in the butt so somehow through thick and thin they make it through and finish the game. Is it good? Was the writing for the game good enough? Did Sato do a good job? Who knows? The game doesn't really end up being a success either. Once again, this isn't that kind of a story. Despite Yamazaki's very immature behavior throughout the show, I actually like his storyline a lot. His biggest dream is to create games. He came to Tokyo on his own with the money he made to get into a game creation course, and yet, Due to some family circumstances, he has to give up and go back to his town. This seems very tragic at first. He worked so hard to make his game with Sato, basically doing every single part except for the script. He's clearly skillful, but life can be cruel at times, and there might come a moment where you need to give up on that dream, let go of it, and try to find happiness in something else, as hard as it sounds. And one of my favorite moments in the entire show is when Sato reads a letter sent by Yamazaki. In that letter, Yamazaki talks about how he has to meet girls for an arranged marriage, and that surprisingly he found a girl he really likes. There's also an image inside the letter, Yamazaki with the girl, and he seems happy. Yamazaki manages to find happiness where he thought it was impossible to do so before. It's okay if life doesn't go exactly how you wanted it to, but just try to make the best of it and you might find joy in the most unexpected places. But back to our main man Sato, so where does all his sufferings lead to? Before we can take a look at how his story wraps up, we need to take a look at one last character. Sato stumbles upon yet another former classmate of his, Kobayashi, who used to be a class representative, a girl with a bright future. Life doesn't always go smoothly though, and Kobayashi, due to some circumstances, ends up in a difficult financial situation where she needs to support herself and her older brother who shares a big similarity with Sato. He is also a Hikumori. Kobayashi is stuck working a shady job trying to get people into a pyramid scheme, and she marks Sato as a perfect victim, selling him some products, but thankfully for Sato, he has Misaki and Yamazaki to snap him out of it and tell him what he got himself into. So the group visits Kobayashi's house to return the product, and that's where NHK has one of its most gut-wrenching moments. Sato, Misaki, and Yamazaki hear a strange noise coming from upstairs 
upstairs and decide to check it out. When they open the door behind it is a man sitting in a dark room, his face lit by the monitor of his PC. He screams in fear, but before the group leaves, Sato notices that Kobayashi's brother is playing an online game he also got addicted to not long ago, hoping to make money from it. In fact, he recognizes the avatar. Sato has met him in-game before. Kobayashi then tells Sato that her brother wants to talk to him through game chat, to which Sato agrees to. What Kobayashi's brother tells Sato were words that I understood myself, words that resonated with me as well. The truth is, I already understand what I should do now and what it would take to make my life go well. I've read 200 self-help books. I understand it all, you see. An obvious question arises from hearing this. Why? If you know all of this, why won't you change? To which the answer is, Quiet. I'm afraid. Afraid of changing the routine of my life. If I change it, something unforeseen could happen. I realize it's no good to keep living as I am, but I still want to. I don't want to log out. Even though I know it can't happen, I'm still thinking that one day, suddenly, an amazing surprise will occur and everything will start going smoothly. In just a few brief moments, this character conveys that anxiety of minds alike perfectly. Fear is the one thing stopping you. Yes, this lifestyle is destructive, but you get used to it and it becomes your comfort zone. A place where you feel safe. Nothing can hurt me here. Nothing unexpected will happen. I can just continue on living like this and enjoying the world that I can only observe through my screen. Sometimes I get so nostalgic over the smallest things of the past that I didn't even consider special at the moment. Feeling a warm, nostalgic feeling, and that isn't even a bad thing, but my mind also likes to remind me of the comfort of those days and how the future is a total blank slate, where I have no idea what might happen. Look how nice it used to be. It will never be as nice as that again. But if the future is blank, then it is a place for vast possibilities. No, it is also a place for endless anxieties. I wish I could stop time and exist in a bubble. But there are positive and happy memories I have managed to make by moving forward in these past years, so there is a possibility for a happy future. Just keep moving forward one little step at a time. Close your computer screen. Log out. Sato logs out and never returns back into the game, but the storyline of Kobayashi's brother doesn't end here. After Kobayashi gets in trouble due to the pyramid scheme company going under, she doesn't come home for a few days. With no foot coming to his door, the brother has no other choice but to leave his room. Facing life or death circumstances, he goes to a local shop begging for food in exchange for work. And thus the loop is broken. The cocoon he sealed himself in finally cracks and he can work towards a better tomorrow. After this encounter, Sato vows to finish the game with Yamazaki, which he does once again with the help of Yamazaki and Misaki, who brings him meals every day. But a cold winter comes, Yamazaki has to move back into his hometown, and that leaves Sato feeling lonelier than ever. Misaki is still there though, and she's at her limit as well. She wants Sato to be by her side at all times, to depend on her, to make her feel less worthless. But Sato declines the offer, the contract, he thinks Misaki Misaki can do much better than him, and that he isn't lonely. The latter is a lie. Sato feels like he is the only person on this earth after Yamazaki's departure. Even after so many experiences, Sato is still a Hikikomori, afraid to change. But that's why I love this series. It never shows characters getting better miraculously. Sometimes a traditional way of just implementing good habits is not enough. Sometimes you are too far gone, and only an extreme situation can cause change. Something like that does happen. After he rejects Misaki, she no longer brings him meals, and then the final nail in the coffin comes in form of a phone call from Sato's parents that they will no longer be able to send him money because his father is sick. Sato goes on for days without eating. He's going to starve to death if he doesn't change anything. Sounds familiar? Yeah, it is exactly like Kobayashi's brother brother facing a situation where you have no other choice but to break free. Toughest prison to break out from is in your mind, and sometimes you need to reach the edge of the cliff to make that big leap. Sato finally goes out into the world. 
Something that seemed impossible to him before is now a lifestyle he can handle. And right as we are reaching the climax of the story, Sato sacrifices himself to save Misaki from death and attempts to kill himself yet again convinced of his worthlessness. He is ready to throw his life away because to him, Misaki's life is clearly worth more. But despite how dark this show can get, it isn't completely morbid, so Sato survives. And from then on, he signs a contract with Misaki. A contract that states that if one of them dies, the other has to die as well. Sounds very depressing, but this kind of codependency might be a good thing for individuals like Sato, who sees no worth in himself, and Misaki, who thinks that her only worth comes from somebody needing her. And just like that, the story ends. Did Sato ever manage to find happiness? Did he ever gain confidence and found worth in himself? We don't know the answers to these questions. NHK was never a show that needed an overly positive, happily ever after ending. Instead, it gives us a realistic portrayal of human lives. Broken dreams, finding worth in yourself, breaking out of the self-destructive routine. NHK resolves these in a way that doesn't sugarcoat anything. The world is harsh. Things won't always go your way. But once you take that leap, you can be okay. Just one step at a right direction. But what exactly is the right direction? What even was my goal with this video? Did I just vent about my own worries and misery for no reason? I need a conclusion that leaves a hopeful message. I need a hopeful message for myself. I need to feel like it's going to be okay. Before I conclude this video, I must state I am not as bad as Sato. At least not yet. The state I am in right now is temporary, there are some future plans about to step in stone soon. Also, I wouldn't ever shut myself inside completely. I have a family that wouldn't let me sink that low, and honestly, I like going out with friends, the few that I have. So not all things are lost, however, I know that I am also a prisoner of my own mind. I am afraid of the future, my thoughts are mostly negative, which drains every bit of enthusiasm that might arise here and there. Ever since I watched NHK, I felt like I was a few wrong decisions away from becoming Sato. This is it. This is how I feel too. I hate his mindset, his thought process, but I also relate to it. My whole life, I have never tried to break out of my comfort zone. I've always had my own little hobbies to enjoy, fantasy world that I create in my head to escape to. I live in that warm nook inside my own head, but I know that time is passing me by. As of writing this video, it's nearing the end of summer. Yet another summer that felt like it was over in an instance while I feel glued and stuck to where I've always been. I'm moving to a new place this October. Everything will suddenly be unfamiliar to me, and I am scared. As Sato states about his Hikigomori life, being able to live as a Hikigomori was in itself very much a luxury. But it's time to move on, no matter how hard it is to leave behind my past self. I have to do it before it's too late. My story has an open ending, leaving room for endless possibilities. Things won't always be great, and sometimes we'll probably be whispering, I can't, I can't, every day while we go on living. But still, I'll give it a try as best as I can. NHK にようこそ。